Yes. It's one of his main things. reading a lot about decolonization recently and how it applies to my game designs and concepts. Um, so I'm going to talk about that today. <laughs> As always, please like and subscribe um, and share these videos with your friends. Check my links down below for my Patreon and other books that inspire me and all that good stuff. <laughs> So decolonization, um, it means a lot of things. I'm talking about um, mostly the intellectual concept of decolonization. So, you know, and like Bob Marley says, emancipating your mind from mental slavery. Uh, and, you know, let, let me just read a definition of decolonization for you. Decolonization is a political process and vital internalization of the rejection of colonialist mindsets and norms. So in America, that's not just the idea of, you know, Europeans um, coming over and taking land from indigenous peoples, but also the concepts of um, enslaving African people, um, whatever we understand to be a Western status quo in America that we perpetuate without really thinking about it. What, what, our, what our status quo and norms are, you know, the misogyny that's a part of our culture, racism that's a part of our culture, et cetera, et cetera. When I think about decolonizing the fiction in games or like the mechanics of games, I think about uh, what those status quos are in tabletop gaming and like, like that reflect the concepts of those status quos in America, like the problematic ones, right? Um, so anything that has to do with, uh, you know, late stage capitalism and oppression, um, which could be reflected in games where like you have to buy a lot of stuff in order to go out adventuring or to protect yourself, right? Buying is a part of the game. Um, that could also be like leveling up, uh, you know, if you are <laughs> the concept of getting better at things and therefore becoming more powerful, gaining more money, more land, stuff like that, um, is tied to kind of some of those negative, um, problematic capitalist concepts where anybody can kind of go and do that. Anyone has the power to engage in this system when in fact the system often oppresses most people and only, uh, you know, enhances the wealth and the land and the, the prosperity of the already rich and the already powerful. There's an emphasis on masculine concepts in games. You know, most, most tabletop games are written, created, and designed by men, cis straight men, often white men. Um, and so it, the games reflect a lot of their experiences and their feelings and everything. They're not, those things aren't bad inherently, but when they are the status quo and the only story being told, uh, that's obviously a problem. So I've, I've done, I focused on a lot of feminine stories in my games, a lot of queer stories, um, in an attempt to decolonize that status quo in particular. Um, I've also stayed away from the idea of a purchasing economy in my games where you have to buy things um, in order to level up or gain more power or things like that. And my game Sync that I'm working on, the cyberpunk game, is, you know, purposefully trying to dismantle systems of power that are problematic um, in America, <laughs> specifically in a, in a near future America that might might or might not be similar to where we're actually headed in reality, but it's a it's a piece of speculative fiction that allows us to imagine um, how we can work together in groups of 
you know, support and friendship and love uh, to kind of overcome these ideas of individualism and capitalism and corruption uh, in order to kind of better the lives of the people around us and literally the world around us. It's hard work to decolonize your ideas. I think that we are so set in our ways of thinking after a period of time, you know? It, it's hard to reprogram your mind constantly. <laughs> you have to be vigilant. Uh, it's something I care about a lot. Um, I really believe in the ability to change my mind and my behavior. Um, through hard work because I don't believe that there is anything inherent in the things that I think. If anything, you know, I was brainwashed at a young age to believe in the status quos of white America, that that is how I'm supposed to live, the things I'm supposed to believe, and the stuff I'm supposed to do. You know, the normal straight status quo narrative of get married, have babies, get a job, you know, be normal don't get tattoos <laughs> on a very base level, right? Um, but I also believe that our personal behaviors can be altered. Uh, there's this thing called cognitive behavioral therapy in psychology. Some people think it's good, some people think it's bad. I found it really helpful for my own way of thinking. Um, and I actually kind of learned how to do it through witchcraft when I was younger. The idea that you have the will to create the way that you think. I think there's a lot of strength in that type of thinking um, to reject status quo notions, right? Don't believe the world around you. Question things. Question your reality. Question your privilege. Question the stuff that you have and why you do the things you do. Often it's something that was programmed in your mind at a young age that has nothing to do with what you really think uh, or the way that you want to live. I have found that to be true for myself um, over and over again, and I still do every day. I try to apply these thoughts to my game design. Um, how can I take what has been taught to me as a game, as things that are supposed to happen in a game, ways that you're supposed to play a character or GM a game, and decolonize those? How can I remove uh, colonizing concepts from those narratives. So specifically ideas of colonization, violence, war, um, oppression, slavery, <laughs> uh, capital to a certain extent, you know, the concept of free markets. Um, all of these things affect our gaming and our gaming incentives and the things that we design inside of games. In Sync in particular, I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of the idea of, um, you know, cyberpunk as, uh, <laughs> I don't know, violent, right? Cyberpunk as this like gun show, uh, you know, ha and, and the, the idea of, of dismantling systems without physical violence, um, how, how normal people can do that and use technology for good. How to use technology and think of it as this connecting thing that can connect activists and connect ideas and people and concepts um, in a way that can cha literally change your personal world and the world in general. Because I see that happening in reality. You know, I see that happening on the internet and um, on social media, on uh, you know our, our personal computing devices that we have, our smart devices, how we communicate with each other is affected by these tools. And I think in what can be and what mostly is a very positive way. And I really want to reflect that in the game, how, how technology can be used as a decolonizing tool. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, what do you think about decolonizing games? Uh, do, do, you, do you see any that are successful at decolonizing certain concepts, like maybe focusing on different perspectives, different people's perspectives, getting rid of some of those colonized ideas that we have in America, um, and just like basically pushing against the status quo of how games are supposed to function or, or typical game design in America in particular, because I'm coming from an American perspective. This is like a difficult question when you start expanding it into the rest of the world because everybody's concepts of colonization are different and specific to the area that they come from. Let me know your thoughts.
down in the comments below. I would love to read them and have some more discussion about this. Um, and yeah, I'll be working on sync. I, I have some new updated documents actually in the playtest document on my website, which is also linked below. If you want to check those out and playtest them, uh, I'm always looking for more feedback. It helps me design my games. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next vid. Mm -hmm.